Are we live? Yes, I think we are. Hello guys, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the studio at Royal Clarence. Now then, my name is Sonia Delamare and I'm a music teacher, um, primarily really a composer actually. And can you, can you hear the girls, it's a bit noisy. Um, I live by the sea and at the at Royal Clarence Marina and consequently sometimes we get, uh, we can hear the birds. But I think that's okay, isn't it? I mean, I really like nature. Um, so I'm I'm very much uh, a podcaster actually, and I've been making um, podcasts for a long time. And I figured that really the best way to teach a musical instrument is to have the visuals as well. So we're launching a whole series now of videos every day um, for you. And at the core, really, of uh, the Tail Teller Club is really positive mental health and a positive musical experience. That's what I'm aiming for. So I want you to have loads and loads of really good fun and good times. Um, and I want you to come here with an open mind and I don't want you to feel pressured or negative or anything like that. And what we need to know is that all instruments are valid, even the voice and the hum and the clap and the stamp, all these things are equally valid as musical expression and also I think what we need to know is that all the sounds are already there we've just got to find them so when you on when you realize that you think no the, the concerto is already here we don't have to invent the sounds so in a way it's a bit of a cheat isn't it we can just find the sounds and then we copy them that's how easy music is Anyway, here is my cello, and me and my cello are a team, and we're very, very much in love, actually. And I want you to love your cello as much as I love my cello. If you can get a good one, it will be really, really helpful. But if you've got some old rubbishy one, don't let it put you off, because we can make sounds out of whatever we have at our disposal. But think about the future and think about having the best that you can afford, okay? And I might be able to help with finding places where you can pick up a, a bit of a bargain. I mean, eBay is quite good, actually. So presumably you've got your cello and that's what's brought you here. But I've got mine and that's what's brought me here, okay? So I'm going to do lots and lots of different classes about how to hold the bow and um, how to you know how to sit comfortably with your instrument all of these things we will be doing those in in greater detail but today I just want to tell you the names of the notes okay that's what we're going to do now so we've got four strings and on the cello there a fifth part now what I will say is that you really should tune your cello before you come to me being ready tuned means we're already halfway there. If you're out of tune a little bit, you're not going to find pleasure in, um, in playing with me. You need to, uh, we need to be in tune with each other, okay? So the first note, the one right by your earlobe, I call it the deep blue C. Oh, it's just yummy, isn't it? And it's deep. And it's a C. That's why I call it the deep blue C. I'm going to play it with my bow. It's fabulous. Now, if you can't hold a bow, don't worry. Or if you can hold it, but it's heavy, maybe just hold it here. Move up a little bit for now. Keep that thumb bent if you can. Want to do is get it nice and straight and don't feel that you can't lean forward if you lean forward you can hear it really well but also you can see that you're straight and when I say straight I mean you're making a cross a plus sign on the string can you see that let me do, try and do this for you oh I've got my hand on it it's a bit difficult. We want to make a 
Mm. Last sign, not kiss sign. You hear the difference? If I... <laughs> it's awful, isn't it? You have to make a plus sign. That's how you make a beautiful sound on the cello. With You make a plus sign, you see. Right. Can you remember that that's your deep blue C? What's the note next to it? I'll give you a clue. There's a very famous piece of music called Air on a something string, G string. So let's try and do the same thing there. You can pizzicato it. You can use your thumb or you can use your forefinger. It depends if you're in a band or um, you know uh, what, what else you're doing. I've seen, I've seen it played several ways and it, it just depends. Take your bow if you can and hold the bow, and you, if, you, if you're worried, hold it halfway, and play me your G string with a nice straight bow. Lean um. forward if you must. Oh, yes. It's rather good, isn't it? Should we play the C, the deep blue C, and then the G? Shall we? Let's do it. strings work together. It's really exciting. The G is quite deep as well, isn't it? But it's not as deep as the deep blue C. It's a bit higher. It's actually five notes higher or a fifth higher. Let's go on to the next one. Now the next one is very, very important for cellists. But do you know what? I'm wondering if I should move that down a little so that you can see a little bit. Better. There we go. You don't need to see my face, do you? Let's get that in. There we go. That's better, isn't it? So let's talk about this D string now. Well, the D string is very, very important for um, cellists, especially if, if you're going to do the Suzuki book with me. I'm going to do ABRSM and Suzuki, so um, it's up to you. But I'd do both if I was you. Um, but we, we, we're going to start on the D string with all our pieces. So the D string is very, very important. Suzuki really liked D strings. So let's try and play it. Let me get it back in my proper position. And back again. And we may as well do another. While we're here, keeping nice and straight so that we make a pretty sound. It was good, wasn't it? So now we can play three notes. The deep blue C, the air on the G, and that rather lovely D. It was almost a tune. Let's have a look at this string. Now this is the one that's furthest away from my ear, and this is called the A string. And this is the hardest one to get right because you're leaning over and you need to lift everything. Now, what I always say to my students is lift everything, take up space, move around. Think of yourself in a large orb and fill it. Fill it, darlings. OK, let's play that A. <laughs> just to make things confusing. When you start at this, at the frog, this is called a frog, and when you start there, it's actually called a down bow, not an up bow, even though it feels like you're going up. But it's a down bow. And whenever you start from here, it's called an up bow. Down. Okay? Just to confuse you. Now then, I think what I'm going to ask you to do for homework is just to practice, and don't forget you can lean forward, or I've got a mirror. 
just here on my chair. And I find a sideways mirror helps me. When you look in the camera, because the cello, that, that would be my straight cello, sort of uh, there. So it's easy to be straight, or, or should I say perpendicular to the string. But because it's like this, it's actually a bit, it, it can be a bit confusing in the camera. So I find it a bit easier to check that I'm straight from my um, side mirror here. And, and that just, I, I just double check and I can see. Do you see? So it just, it just depends on, on the angle. So be careful. But I like to have my mirror and I like to see um, my the position of all over my body actually. So remember, you can lean forward and just check that you're straight. And then, yes, straight. And then do do um, do your motion accordingly. I mean, I hit the side there because I was trying to do five things at once. You'll get used to it, and like, just like I'll get used to um, talking in this video, which is very very strange for me. Um, the podcasts go out. Uh, what I do is I'm I'm going to take the um, audio from this, and that'll be free on a podcast, so you can listen for free still. Um, and that, that's on my Spreaker app. But if you want to see the videos, then just pop along to the Tale Tale Club and sign up. And it's five pounds a month, which is pretty good value, I think. Um, so I had a totally wicked time and uh, everything for me was a total pleasure. And I hope it was for you too. And I'll be back tomorrow because I'm going to do a lesson every day, probably first thing. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. In the morning, this is my music room. And in the morning, the sun, the winter sun, just pours through. It's, it's afternoon now, and the sun's going away. And I want to do these broadcasts early before I um, before I start my, my full day of making music and all the other things that I do. Um, so I want to really capitalise on that sun. It's really, really good practice, actually, to have something beautiful around you when you're practising. Something to look at out of a window, perhaps some flowers. A painting, if you're in a small space, you could have a beautiful painting. And sometimes when you're practicing um, an exercise and, uh, you know, say, say I, I mean, I do hope you're going to be doing lots and lots of these um, for your practice uh, often. And you don't have to look at any music. You can, you can, you know, allow your eyes to wander off and go to somewhere else, to another dimension. And I, I think that's quite healthy. But it, don't get distracted. But you know, you can have something else, some other stimulus. Another thing you can do is you can shut your eyes. See what happens when you do that. All these things are very valuable for different reasons. So guys, thank you very much for joining me and um, I'll see you tomorrow, I hope.